Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you. This time I'm talking episode 7 of season 8 of Dexter called Dress Code. And overall, this is another alright episode, but once more, we're moving the pieces around <coughs> on the board. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what with there only being three episodes left, this is getting a little bit old. And honestly, looking back on the season, I've noticed that there's quite a bit of padding with these episodes going on. Now, I'm glad that they're trying to do something with Masuka as a character, but if you really stop and think about it, this is pretty much padding. It sort of feels like they had, like, only enough material for maybe seven episodes, and we've got we've got to deal with all of this stuff to stretch it out in, into ten. And... <clears throat> Well, one of the strengths of Dexter is that it doesn't have to run 22 seasons. I'm sorry, 22 episodes a season or something like that, but but still. <clears throat> anyway, kind of, well, let's get into it, and let's, uh, since I brought him up, let's talk about what's going on with Masuka. Uh, so here, he, g he goes for the fairly obvious plot twist that his daughter is doing something to make money that is a little... Um, unwholesome, shall we say. And, you know, given Masuka's lifestyle and his interests and the way he talks about sex and sexually harasses all the women around him, this is just such an obvious plot twist. Now, I mean, it does lead to a, a cute moment or two here, and, you know, it also feels like it's uh, Showtime going, hey, we're Showtime. Here are some attractive young ladies without their tops on. But, uh, you know, yeah, again, like I said, this just feels like padding, and, well, like I said, it just doesn't really seem like a very strong element of the story. Let's leave it at that. Uh, okay, so let's talk about Quinn this episode. And, once again, Quinn makes a mi miraculously stupid decision, and that is, hey, I'm going to go and move in with my girlfriend just despite her brother, uh, you know, her brother who happens to be his boss and who has enough dirt on Quinn that he probably, that if Angel decided he really wanted to stick it to Quinn, Quinn wouldn't be able to get a job as a mall cop. Yeah. Advancing your relationship forward to spite your girlfriend's brother. That's a brilliant decision, Quinn. I'm sure that will do nothing but bring happiness and good things to your relationship with Jamie. Uh, uh, one thing that I did like this episode is Elway, the way Elway told off Deb. Now, look, it's, it's, it is fair to say that Delway does definitely have some ulterior motives. I mean, Deb realizes that he's interested in her. And I like how she rejects him in a very clear and pretty understandable manner. But... Deb, up to this point, has really been abusing this guy's kindness. And, and uh, I like that Elway really just kind of finally said, you know what, I've cut you a lot of slack. A, a, at this point, a thank you is long overdue. And, you know, he's perfectly right, and this, this does get through to Deb. And they seem to have reached kind of an equilibrium in in their relationship, which is good. And I like that Deb also acknowledges that if if she hadn't had Elway to lean on, she would not have been able to make it through everything that had been going on with Dexter. So, I have a feeling that this is meant to be, you know, a little bit of a hope. Now, I've repeatedly mentioned that my theory on this uh, season is that it's all going to end in tears. Now, I'm not saying that I think that this is, series is going to end on a sad note, or that I think Dexter is going to die, although I certainly consider that a possibility. I'm just saying that before we reach that uh, final moment in the series, the the smelly stuff is seriously going to hit the fan, and uh, I'm guessing some long-established uh, long characters are going to end up on slabs. And let's see here. Oh, speaking of established characters, uh, we this is our f the full return of Hannah McKay. Now, one thing that I liked about this episode is that when Dexter wakes up, it's it's really unclear as to what's going on. You know, I kind of half expected him finding find him taped to a table with Hannah standing over him with a knife. And 
you know, the fact that they didn't do that was kind of a nice twist because, you know, like Dexter and Deb, I'm sitting there scratching my head thinking, what in the world is going on in Hannah's head? And that uncertainty maintains through right up until pretty much the climax of the episode. And that's good. But ultimately, Hannah's explanations for why she did that and all this other stuff, it just really falls a little flat. Also, you'd think that somebody as smart as Hannah would be a little more concerned that, you know, Deb is also involved in this situation. You know, Deb, the the cop, the woman that you also tried to murder. Now, granted, Deb is now a mixture of the I've tr member of the I've tried to kill Dexter Club, but Hannah has no way of knowing that. And one would think that she'd be a little bit more concerned that a volatile uh, ex-cop is out there who has even more reason to hate her. Now, granted, Hannah uh, does have that dirt on Dexter and all that other stuff, but again, I think Hannah is just really basically kind of ignoring the fact that Deb exists, which seems to me to be a tremendously... Uh, Tremendously big mistake given the amount of animosity that Hannah knows Deb has towards her. And of course, uh, Dexter is uh, not exactly handling the whole Deb versus Hannah situation very well. I mean, we see them, Deb spots them, those two having this extremely charged conversation. And you've, I love uh, just the look on her face because. You know, we do have these two polar opposites, you know, Deb on one side, Hannah on the other. And as we've seen, Deb will always choose Dexter, and here it's looking like Dexter will always choose Hannah. And if that doesn't have recipe for disaster written all over it. But another thing about this episode that's good is that it continues to show what I've mentioned is one of the reoccurring themes in Dexter, is that Dexter is constantly searching to establish these connections with other killers. I mean, we seen it, saw him do it with Brian, we saw him try and do it with Arthur Mitchell, we saw him try and do it with Travis Marshall, and of course all of it ends in tears. It didn't end particularly well last season either. But again, here it is, it's happening again. And Hannah even says that De that after everything he's done with her, she still has has feelings for Dexter because he's the only person that really understands her. And you can see that Dexter is thinking along similar lines. And of course we also have Dexter's connection with Zack. Now, I honestly don't really think that uh, De Zack is the one that killed Cassie. I'm going to put it out there that it's probably the boring, poorly defined as a character boyfriend. Because if it turns out to be him, well, the solution for da Zack's desire to kill is right there. And, uh, yeah. It certainly drives the plot forward in a much more interesting way than just having Zack be the killer, since it's so heavily implied to be him. And also, one thing that we've seen on the show is that serial killers tend to stick to patterns. You know, Zack is lashing out at people who have bought, have hurt him personally. And while obviously he can't keep continuing to do that, he's got to move on to Dexter's uh, habit of killing people who deserve it. That's what he even said he wants. He even begged Dexter last episode to kill him because he did not want to kill innocent people, people who didn't deserve it. So while his desire to kill has of course been building, as it's clearly demonstrated in this episode, that he would take it out on Cassie, it just doesn't really make sense. This this is way too it's it's, it's way too easy. This has got to be a red herring. And, uh, let's see. Um, uh, yeah, honestly, I think that really kind of covers it. Um, like I said, this is just more moving the pieces around and honestly padding things out probably a little bit more than is necessary. But with only three episodes left, I'm guessing next week is where, where things start to really, really blow up. And... Well, I won't. I don't want to make any kind of prediction, really, as to what is going to happen in the final episode. 
you know, I don't want to say whether I think Dexter is going to live or he's going to die. I don't want to say if he's, I think that there's going to be a, a quote unquote happy ending. But I think that there's going to be a satisfying ending. I have the feeling that that last scene is going to go out on a typically Dexter twisted kind of moment. And as long as it can do that, I have the feeling I'll be able to walk away from the series satisfied. Anyway, guys, that's all I have for you this time around. As always, please comment, rate, and subscribe. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Who's Your Jedi. Until next time, take care and have a good one.